it's time to review the A6500. What do I say? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more to be said. I'm pretty excited about this right now because Audible is offering a free audiobook to my viewers of The Silent Lens. You can go to audible.com slash The Silent Lens and sign up to get a free audiobook. It's yours to keep after the 30-day free trial. So go check it out. Best of all, if you don't like the book you're reading, you can swap it for something else. That's their guarantee. Their library is unmatched. I spend a tremendous amount of time commuting in LA and audiobooks are absolutely the answer. You can listen to great books that give you great information. I'm listening to one right now called Love is a Killer App by Tim Sanders. I think it's a pretty fabulous book. So click on the link below, go to audible.com slash the sign of lens and pick out your book today. Nice. Yeah, there you go. The shutter on here is a little difficult. Hi, this is J.P. Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. And this is Cinderella Graham. And she's here with us to help us test the new A6500 from Sony. It's not that super new, but we wanted to put it through its uh, paces and just see what it does both for stills. You know, people are constantly, I should have said in video. And video. I messed up. <laughs> people are constantly asking us for recommendations on what camera should I get, especially relatives and stuff. They don't want to spend two or three thousand dollars on a camera because they're not really doing it professionally, but they still want something that's going to look professional. And I am continually saying, take a look at the Sony A6000, A6300, A6500, um, but I've actually never used them myself. I was just kind of going off the spec sheet. So now we're going to try it out. Which is a dangerous thing to do because spec sheets are just a lot of numbers. It's a matter of how does it work for you in your hand, how do the functions work for you, and we're going to kind of put it through its paces and see how it does work. I know this, it's a, it's a small compact little camera. It is small. And we've got a 50 millimeter lens, we each have one, it's like matching cameras. <laughs> we are so cool. We decided to go with the 50 millimeter lens because we figured if you're going to buy this camera to run on vacation or something like that, a good portrait lens is a good choice. It's lightweight, it's relatively affordable, and you're probably not going to want to mess with adapters using other lenses. So, so what kind of sensor do we have here? We have an APS-C sensor. So this 50 millimeter is going to be a little long. So a 35 millimeter lens on this camera is going to give us a nice 50 millimeter look. Yeah. And a 35 millimeter lens is probably a great place to start. But they have some small zoom lenses for this that are very nice as well, and you might want to consider that. Yeah. All right, let's get started and see what we can do. I know this is like a terrible thing to admit, but when I'm out shooting like this, and I'm just running and gunning, I shoot this stuff on, on P all the time. And I know, or I do an aperture preferred. I'll decide I want this aperture, and I just let the camera give me a shutter speed. Because I just, it's like, I want to shoot fast. I don't want to have to think a lot about those kinds of things. I don't want to be changing it. And a camera like this, I don't think the shutter's that easy to change. It's not my favorite thing to deal with. This little wheel in the back is just too quick, it's too slow. So I'll pick a shutter, or an aperture, put on aperture priority, say, okay, I want this to be pretty wide open, I'm going to get 2.8, and then I'll let the shutter do what it wants to do. And I'll watch that shutter if it's getting too slow, so I'll kick my ISO up. But I also shoot on continuous a lot when I'm out like this, because I'll shoot it'll a burst of two or three frames, and that's why I love the fact that this will buffer, as, I mean, you can shoot as many as you want, because it's not going to shut you down. Car's coming, I want to see that car, and I'll go click, 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 you know, versus click, it's too slow and single so click. You know, that car's already made it all the way across the, the frame by the time I can get another shot off. So in, the, in this autofocus mode, this has a touch screen for autofocus. So in video mode, if somebody's walking towards you, you can, you can touch the screen to have, them, have it move there, or you can touch the screen to have it move away from them. And that's when you put it on that slow dissolve, so it slowly moves, so it's more like a, a video, yeah, uh, you know, so it's focus like move. A video thing. Yeah, versus fast, you know. But if you're following, like, somebody's moving fast, like a runner or something, you're going to want it to be on fast mode and uh, quick response. So fast mode and quick response. But you can, it's like, a, it's like a different way to think. You look to the viewfinder and you can touch the screen underneath you and be moving that dot around what you want to be in focus and while you're looking to the EVF. And it'll follow it, it'll yeah. Follow. It's a different way to, Interesting. it's a different way to work, you know? It's just a different way to get used to, so.
So we are, uh, because it was raining outside, found a little corner of a parking garage and we're going to shoot a, an ISO test to just see how this thing responds to ISO. So we're going to start at 100 ISO, just keep doubling it, probably end at 6400 ISO. That's going to give us our best idea. I'll shoot stills, Ken's going to shoot video, and it'll show us just uh, what the uh, image looks like and how this camera holds up to uh, low light. Got a Roscoe light up here, just give a little bit of light on the side of her face so she's not completely in the dark. These are great for this kind of uh, purpose because we've got an Anton Bauer battery on it. Running down on location works fabulous. So. Okay, so we're back in the studio. Let's quickly look at the specs on this camera before we look at the footage that we shot. And uh, I'll just lead off with, uh, obviously from a still point of view, I love the fact that it's 24 uh, megapixel camera, which even though it's a smaller ACP uh, sensor, yeah. Um, it's still a pretty pretty amazing uh, megapixels for that size. It's a decent size sensor. Yeah, I mean you're spending this one's like fourteen hundred dollars, but even for fourteen hundred dollars, twenty four megapixels is incredible. That's twice as much as what the five D Mark One yeah. was ten years ago. Which incredible is, focusing points for doing autofocus, it's like yeah, over four hundred autofocus points. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's just so incredible. But really, the benefit of this camera um, that we experienced today is just the size. The size is really attractive. It's almost the size of some phones, maybe a little thicker. Um, and then, yeah, of course, you add the lens. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little thicker, but... <laughs> but really, I mean, if you compare this in size, this is probably two or three pounds. You compare that to like a, a 5D or a Nikon D800 with a 50 millimeter oh lens on it, and you're less than half the weight and yeah. definitely half the size. Much lighter, much lighter. If you put Great a 35 millimeter camera. lens on this thing, you know, yeah, it's going to be just a uh, pocket walk camera. Around. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Walk around. So let's uh, let's look at some of the things we let's got. Let's look at the footage. Uh, so first off, for stills, we looked at uh, uh, our dynamic range on this camera. It's a pretty good challenge in that you've got yeah. dark area where she's under the umbrella to that really blown out sky in the yeah. background. So. so that was a challenge. We shot here. We shot a photo that was just sort of metered in between. She's a little bit on the darker side in terms of exposure, but the skies held pretty well. This is what I would say is probably close to proper exposure. Probably as normal as you're going to get under those circumstances. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we decided let's do a overexposure by two stops and see how it looks. Now, she's actually explo exposed better. In she looks a lot now, better. Yeah. But everything else around her seems pretty bright. Pretty blown out. Um, so we decided to take that in to Photoshop and correct it and see how much of the detail we could bring back. Now, it's not a huge different difference, but if you compare this to the regular exposure, you'll see that in the background, um, the clouds have a little more You're texture You're holding the to clouds. Them. The road is holding more of the detail in the road. And it's like, that's two stops over. And when we did the underexposure... I looked at this and I said, there's no way. We'll, we'll no never way. see anything. I just thought, my word, this is just darkness. There's no way we're going to pull anything out the of sky this at all. Was, the sky was like barely exposed correctly. She was yeah. really dark. Um, and we pulled it up a few stops and pulled up the shadows and it actually looks really clean. It looks pretty dang clean. I mean, not there's a lot of a, texture. A little bit of texture in the darks, but, uh, but not bad. It's a pretty clean image. So that underexposed by two stops and able to pull that out was pretty impressive. I mean, I think if anything in these circumstances, I would lean towards protecting the highlights, underexpose a little bit, yes, and then push it back up like we did because it's pretty impressive. For most applications, you'll be totally fine, especially you know if you're shooting a family yeah. event or something. So it has a very, it has a decent dynamic range, and yeah. it seems like it, it holds from the highlights and the shadows. I think you're right. You just expose a little more, underexpose a little bit, so you don't blow your highlights out. Now, uh, autofocus is. Always an interesting thing with these mirrorless <laughs> cameras because they have so many features. It's just crazy the number of options. And and so, I mean, when we go through a process of what's the best options here, I and... Think, I think for for this kind of camera, if you're going to be shooting family and stuff, the face detection is probably a really useful feature. It is. And so we kind of leaned on that one. Decided to do, let's, let's do face detection um, and see if if it can hold her as she walks towards the camera. Well, what happened when she was a long ways away, we didn't have the face detection didn't pick her face up. Right. And so it was just that that center or that point of reference that was picking her up and it would it would move with her. I looked through all of these and there's like 60 of them. I shot rapid fire as she walked towards us, like 60 images here. And she's pretty sharp on every one of them. Yeah, it does seem to appear this way. What was your F stop? Uh, we're pretty open. It was Looks like a 2.8 or yeah, something. Yeah, it was pretty open. So 
Yeah, it's holding her face as she gets here close. Yeah, right up into really the out. camera, you know, yeah. it held her face right up into the camera. So the, the autofocus on these cameras is absolutely uh, amazing, but it does take some learning. I mean, there's a, a learning curve here because there are a lot of different options. I mean, there's an option where you can focus looking through the camera, but put your thumb on the screen and move what you want to have in focus. You can decide how fast you want the focus to move from forward to back. So if you want more of a cinema look, you can have a slow move. You can have a fast move if you're doing somebody like on a horse. You know, so there's a lot of different options. You've got to really learn what this camera will do and practice with those to figure it out. And so. there are other factors that can go into that too. Like on this, in this instance, um, she's under the umbrella, she has darker skin, so there's not a lot of contrast in her face to grab onto. So when she's further away, the face detection isn't going to work as well because it won't be able to understand what it's seeing. Yep. So I wonder, I'm curious, if we were shooting someone fair skinned in direct sunlight, if the face detection would work more. Probably. My yeah. instinct is probably it would. But it worked pretty impressive here. I mean, it wasn't face right. detection, but we had both those on. We had the face detection on. And the wide, and the, and the wide and, focus. And the wide focus. So it was following her, it was tracking her in as she came. The third thing we wanted to try out for this was ISO because if you're, you never know when you're going to be shooting a birthday party and it's going to be in a house at night and there's not a lot of light, things going on. You don't want to miss your five year old blowing out the candles because don't want to miss that. too much noise. That's it's a really right. important moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was impressed with these overall. It, it was interesting. At 100 ISO, it holds, it's clean, it's a clean image all the way. And, you know, up into 800. Uh, at 1600, pretty okay. 1600 though, it starts to, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm too picky about the... Uh, it probably depends on how large you're printing it. Yeah, absolutely. It. Yeah. Because if you just view it at this size, they look fabulous. They look great. I would say 6400 is pretty noisy. 6400 looks a lot like an iPhone would. It does. Yep. In terms of low light. And when you go to the, the next step up, which is 12,500, yeah, it's, pretty I mean, noisy. it's getting pretty noisy. And it? this is properly exposed. So, you know, I know a lot of the time when you're shooting low light images, most of the image is really dark, um, as opposed to this where most yeah, of the image is actually pretty of, bright. We had a lot of light here, yeah, and so you're only seeing the grain come out kind of in her dress, dress and her arms, things yep. like that. Um, if you're shooting at night, you're going to see a lot more noise in the image. At much the more. Much more. But it seems to do okay up to like I thought it did very good. It's pretty yep. good. Yep. So we're going to take a look now at some of the video features that we have on this camera. Look at the stills, now let's look at the videos, then we'll wrap it up. So. Overall, I just kind of wanted to get a feel for the image. Now, this is color corrected using Film Convert, which we had a lot of success with last time. Um, honestly, it looks a lot like all of the other Sony cameras I've shot with. We're using S-Log3, which is an extremely flat profile. Now, you have to be careful shooting S-Log3 because it's so flat, it brings up those shadows, and when you're shooting, especially on these cameras, there's no uh, exposure tools besides the zebras. So, you could be looking at the image on the camera and say, well, that looks pretty properly exposed, but in reality, it's going to be too dark. It's going to be too noisy. Way too dark, yeah. Um, I would say when I shot these, I probably shot these about a stop too dark. I would have maybe overexposed by one more stop, but I was really trying to protect those highlights. They, they trick you, though. I, I just got to really lean on that meter and have mm -hmm. a good sense, and, mm -hmm. or to meter, you know, is really the right thing to do. To so. meter is... Definitely the way to go, but I imagine if you're shooting with this camera, you're, not gonna you're be probably carrying a not going to be carrying a meter. If you're worried about a camera <laughs> that's that weight, you're not going to be carrying a light meter. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So, um, we did the autofocus test a couple of times. I like this one the best because um, it has a shallow, we were under the shade of some trees, the clouds were a little thicker at this point, so it's a shallower depth of field, and we had the face detect on just like we did in the stills test, and it held her really well. If I was running around with my family, trusting the camera to focus for me on everything? I don't know, that's a good question. I'm kind of a manual focus junkie, so. You know, that's the problem that we have. We kind of both come from that, the use manual focus, you know, so yeah. it's not, you don't yeah. rely on. But I'm looking at that going, it's as, it's certainly every bit as reliable as if I'm pulling focus and somebody's walking towards you, because you're going to be missing that along the way, here and there. And I will say this, if you're going to be shooting family or something on this camera, the APS-C sensor, it's a smaller sensor, so you have more depth of field and stuff. You could probably rely on the autofocus most of the time, especially yeah. during a bright day. Yep. Um, if you're in the low light and your depth of field is a little more shallow, I might lean on the manual focus. Side note on that, um, if you're going to be manual focusing for video, if you're going to be doing any video on this, I would recommend using a lens with 
better manual focus gears. Again, this is one of those electronic lenses that we had on the A7R2 last time, and manual focusing with this is really hard. It's great for stills, so if you're looking mainly for a stills lens, I wouldn't hesitate to get a native E-mount lens like this. For video, I would look into more manually oriented lenses. Yeah. Now, uh, I did want to try out the 120 frames per second in 1080p. is a pretty cool feature. I want to see that. Now, it is definitely s fairly soft. I think part of that is the lens. I think part of it is that it's having to pixel bin to get that 1080p from the 4K. Oh, how interesting, yeah. Um, and the noise comes out a lot more. It like really I said, does. I probably should have exposed this about one stop brighter. So you can see there's a lot of texture in your face. Really that would probably is. go away if I had brightened a little bit. <laughs> but the motion looks really great. Oh, well, motion looks fabulous. If you're looking for a lot of features, if you want to shoot slow motion, this is a great camera. I mean, this camera is $1,400 and it still does higher frames per second than, you know, like the C100 does yeah. for three grand. So. Absolutely. Fabulous. Um, rolling shutter is a serious problem for the Sony cameras, and here's a shot that demonstrates that. I'm following behind the actress with just the camera, bare bones like this, holding it, no rig, nothing. You can see the image stabilizer is trying it's really, trying really, really hard. hard. Really hard, <laughs> and it's doing a pretty good job at smoothing out the bumps and hitches, but um, you can still see with every bump there's a little bit of a jello jiggle. Were you doing that? Because it shouldn't be bouncing like that, should it? I mean... Just jump up? You try walking with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, point taken. <laughs> uh, rolling shutter is pretty serious. It's about as serious on this camera as, as it is on others. If you're going to be shooting fast moving objects, any sort of sports or anything like that, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend this camera for, for video. fast moving video. Yep. For casual stuff, especially if you're using a tripod, you'll be fine. Um, the pocket camera probably has as poor a rolling shutter and it's shot some really great stuff. Okay, ISO test. So the, the results were pretty similar here, I think, to the photos. I started at ISO 400 because it's, yeah. it's clean at 400. 800 is equally pretty clean. 1600 you start to see the texture. I start to see the texture, yeah, yeah. and her hair and the dress. I didn't shoot this in S-Log because I, if I'm going to be shooting in high ISO situation, I'll always default back to the um, standard profile settings. Mm -hmm. 3200, 6400 seem to be kind of the limit. It's not a low light beast like the A7S. No. Then mm -hmm. again, it's not as bad as some of the older DSLRs we're used to using, like the T6i, things like that. Yeah. Okay, let's wrap this up. What have we learned? Um, there are a lot of advantages to this camera. I think the number one is the size. Size is a huge deal. I think it's really user friendly to people who aren't really professional photographers because you have the electronic viewfinder, which means what you see is what you get. You can look at the viewfinder and be like, oh, my image is too dark. I need to, you know, open the aperture and stuff as opposed to having to read a meter and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. I don't always recommend working that way because the viewfinders and stuff can be set to too bright or something like yeah. that. Your image will be turn out differently. It, it scares me a little bit. I go off the meter. Even if I'm holding this up here and I'm looking at it and yeah. the screen, I always go off the meter you really on the bottom. You should go off the meter, but for quick reference or if you're really trying to, you know, I have a two-year-old and I pull out the camera to get him doing something shot. cute and it's done. So if you need to get a quick shot and you adjust your exposure really fast, then the electronic viewfinder uh, is handy. I think for stills on this camera, as a walk-around camera, put it on aperture priority. Choose the aperture you want, if you want it to be a more a long, a de a more depth of field or less depth of field, and let it do its shutter and adjust the ISO if you need to in the situation you're in. I think that just gives you the, the quickness that this camera will afford you to be able to shoot fast and get the images you want. Um, I used a lot, this, the a7R II like that when I was in Cuba. It just was fast and easy to use that way. If I want to get a quick portrait of someone, I'm not stopping and trying to mess. I did not love on the camera the changing the shutter. It, it's just, you yeah. got this little wheel. I mean, once the, you activate it on the wheel, you can't turn it up here. The nice thing about the but, body is that you have this their new style of grips, mm -hmm. like the A7R II does, which is really great to hold, especially with the size. It's just so light and easy to handle. But you're right. There's no wheel on the front. Drives me crazy. Yeah, I keep thinking, where's <laughs> the wheel? So you got one wheel, and it, it changes functions depending on what you click on. Mm -hmm. you know, shutter, aperture. 
and that I think was a little slower to use on this camera. Same with the ISO. The ISO was interesting that if you click on the ISO, it jumps one stop each time you click the uh, wheel. So yeah. it goes from two to four to eight, you know, so it doesn't do the third stop. Yeah, in you can either do uh, like the micro adjustments or yeah. use the control dial. Now the one advantage over the 6300 is you got uh, you got some hot keys up here. Yeah, which are nice. Really kind of nice. It's nice these all Sony's bodies are nice in that you can customize yes. almost all of the keys to a certain extent. Yep. Not a huge fan of the video button placement. Uh, people <laughs> have been complaining about that for like two years. And I, I can't, changed it. <laughs> it, it. It's like I feel like I have to almost let go of the camera yeah, to turn it yeah, on. I, I, I feel like I wish they had another button underneath here or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or I don't know something 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 anywhere. Anything. But. Um, overall, though, I mean, I think they've done a pretty good job with the real estate they have. Yeah. The screen is a little tiny. It's a little bit yep. of squash vertically, but again, it's the size. The size is a selling point, so all of the things it we're is. complaining about, you can get, for the most part, in an A7R2 or something like that, but it's going to be a bigger camera and a bigger investment. For me, I think that the the price point and the drop in weight is perfect. Uh, like for Jolene, she's going to want to use a camera like this because it's easy. I have a daughter who loves to travel but doesn't want to carry a lot of weight, so she's trying to really travel lean and mean. I think you get an image off from this that will work for stock, like a Getty stock. Mm -hmm. I think you definitely yeah. have an image I mean, that will 20, work for that. 24 megapixels is 24 megapixels professional grade. On that C sense, yeah, absolutely. For me, I would rather carry the A7R2. I'd rather carry the extra weight, which is what I did in Cuba. I shot everything on the A7R2. I just it was not that much heavier than this. It was easy to carry around. It was lightweight enough. But but I think this is a fabulous camera in a lot of ways. Fills a, a place in the market that's get, bridging that gap between your phone and really stepping into major cameras. So. I would say video wise, uh, it's pretty good. I'm not a fan of the rolling shutter. The S log is amazing um, if you know how to expose. If you're experienced with it. But that's you've got it. When you start doing S log and doing post process like that, you really have to know what you're doing. You don't have to know what you're doing. You have to have the right color process. You have to have a pretty good computer. I mean. For 4K, if you're shooting in 4K and then color grading it all, it's going to be pretty heavy. Um, if you're really going to be, I mean, if you're just shooting around for fun video, this is a great camera. If you're going to be really serious about shooting short films and stuff like that, you'll probably want to rig it up some way. It's just so small and tiny. Um, I, I like heavier cameras, beefier cameras, especially for hand holding getting shoulder rig, something like that would be really useful. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with that rolling shutter. You don't want to be doing this, as we've seen, hand holding it that way. Yeah. But overall, fabulous camera, fabulous price point, and one that the market uh, is already uh, really uh, responding to well. So I am totally comfortable recommending this to friends who say, hey, I need a good camera that's not too expensive and isn't like super complicated. Though I will say the menu system is still super complicated. Pretty complicated. A lot of stuff in there, though. A lot of stuff you'll probably never use, but you could if you needed to. So there you have it. The Sony A6500. So keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. I'm going to hit that Q one day. <laughs> So it's a new year, it's time to uh, kind of get your business together. So if you're looking for some good advice and a way to kind of get your business put together, go to theslimelens.com. We've got an excellent business course there that will help you get your business on the right foot and help you be successful in 2017. So check it out. Subscribe to this Land of Lens and check out our other reviews and tell us what you want to review. We have a lot of ideas, but we want to hear from you. And join our Facebook group too. We've got a great Facebook group. We've got a great business page. We've got a great lot of things. So join them all. Join us. Love us. Be my friend. Our friends. I don't really need any more, but he does. <laughs> <laughs>